Hello everyone, this is Graham from Terabit Web bringing you the cybersecurity news for October 26, 2020. We thought this would happen at one time or another, but the first ransomware attack that affected a database used in elections for this voting cycle affected Hall County in northern Georgia. Doppelpamer, the international ransomware gang, is posting documents from the attack and claiming responsibility on the dark web. Officials believe that election systems were not targeted in the attack, but were affected by the ransomware. The date of infection was October 7, 2020. The database affected was used to verify absentee ballot voter signatures. Workers were forced to use hard copies of signatures and use the state database to continue working on the absentee ballots. The voting process has not been impacted according to Hall County officials. Also, there were other critical systems affected, including the phones at Hall County, but emergency services were not affected. Hall County has enlisted cybersecurity experts to recover, and the county is continuing to recover and bring all systems back online. The Emotet malware is making headlines yet again. Emotet is a successful Trojan that was created in 2014. It uses spammed laced with malware to distribute the virus. As a computer becomes infected, it becomes part of the Emotet botnet. Emotet has been so successful it is used in malware as a service since 2017. The Emotet creators lease their botnet of computers to attack a chosen target for a charge. However, to stay relevant and successful, the malware must evolve to prevent eradication. This latest iteration impersonates Microsoft Word updates. The Emotet Trojan uses spam emails to distribute. Sometimes these are disguised as invoices, COVID-19 info, shipping documents, resumes, or other interesting attachments. The user downloads and clicks on the Word attachment. The attachment is loaded. It asks you to update Word, which encourages the user to enable editing and macros. Once macros are enabled, if not already, the virus is downloaded, then it installs itself. Emotet will use your computer to send spam emails. Also, in Emotet's uh, recent iteration, it also downloads and installs additional malware, such as Quackbot, which is used to harvest sensitive banking information, and Trickbot, which is used to harvest all kinds of personal accounts, such as PayPal, bank accounts, crypto wallets, or any other personal account that may be of value. For more information about Emotet, the way it works, it spreads, or how to remove it, see the links below the video. Hewlett Packard Enterprise fixes a critical bug in Store Serve Management Console. This bug is addressed in CVE 2020-7197. This is a remote authentication bypass flaw affecting HPE 3PAR store serve management, and core software media before version 3.7.0. Any attacker without any rights to the system could utilize this exploit. CVE rating of 10, which is the highest possible rating, has been assigned to this vulnerability. Remediation is by upgrading to HPE SSMC version 3.7.0. 0.1.1 using the HPE My License Portal and your HPE Passport account. It's time once again for administrators to update Oracle products. Oracle releases patches for their products in January, April, July, and October. For October 2020, we see update counts that are second only to July's patches of 440. There are 402 patches included in the October update. These include fixes for 82 critical vulnerabilities, 85 high vulnerabilities, and 272 vulnerabilities that can be exploited remotely without any authentication. This patch pertains to over 27 Oracle product families. This is the last Oracle patch for this year. Next patch is scheduled for January 2021. This is yet another healthcare data breach, but this data breach has a bit of a twist. Vastamo is a large psychotherapy practice in Finland with over 20 locations. 
the data breach occurred between November 2018 to March 2019. About 40,000 health records were affected by the data leakage, but unclear what type of information was gathered. Data likely holds names and addresses of clients and staff, but may also include patient records and therapist notes. The blackmailers wanted 450,000 euros from Vastimo. Vastimo apparently didn't pay the ransom. So the blackmailers took a different approach and decided to post batches of patient records to the dark web and have the patients pay 200 to 500 euros to not expose their data. Email threats were sent to the patients and the employees of the company to either pay up or have their patient data exposed. It's unclear why it has taken so long for the attackers to come forward with the demands or if the blackmailer had acquired the database from the original attackers who took the data. Clients and employees of Vastimo are encouraged not to pay the blackmail fee and to report the incident to Finnish police immediately. For more information on this developing situation, see the links below. Once again, thank you for joining us. Please connect with us again. Make sure to like or subscribe to our videos.